in 1934, some important categories were added to the awards and some important events took place. This evening, we'll be flashing back to a few of them. For instance, in 1934, the Board of Governors of the Academy voted a special Oscar to a six-year-old girl who had charm and had a lot of joy that she brought to that particular year. It was a little Oscar for a little girl. But if the Academy had known the impact she was to have the next few years, <laughs> they would have given that gold statue a mile high. I'm presenting all right. who could sing, who could dance, who could charm. But only one could do it all, Shirley Temple. On the gold ship, lollipop, it's me, and these stuff, where bonbons play. On the sunny beach of Peppermint Bay, all through the 1930s, Shirley Temple was everybody's favorite little girl. She was a tonic for the Depression and an absolute bonanza for 20th Century Fox. I love a military man. I love a military nurse. <laughs> Whenever she sang and danced, she lit up the screen, as in Poor Little Rich Girl with Jack Haley and Alice Faye. In Captain January, Shirley's dancing partner was Buddy Epson. Sunnybrook Farm featured the most popular of Shirley's dancing partners, Bill Robinson, the legendary Bojangles. voted a special Oscar for all the pleasure she brought to moviegoers that year. Writer humorist Erding S. Cobb was the master of ceremonies. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Cobb. Mommy, can I go home now? Ladies and gentlemen, the former United States ambassador to the Republic of Ghana, West Africa, the most popular child star in the history of motion pictures, Shirley Temple. big for a 50-year-old, is it? <laughs> oh, well. Jack Haley, Alice Faye, Buddy Epson, Bill Robinson, what good friends. Bill Robinson was the first to let me know that black is beautiful. My husband of... <laughs> my husband for 34 years, Charlie Black, has also let me know that black is beautiful. When I received my uh, special Oscar, 
The awards banquet was held at the Biltmore Hotel. The crystal and the silver were sparkling. Everyone was elegantly dressed. I was the only one in a short skirt. Jean Harlow was in long white crepe and furs. Actors Clark Gable, William Powell, and Ronald Coleman all sported their mustaches. I was bored. I wasn't hungry. I collected crumbs from hard bread rolls and made symmetrical little piles. When Irvin S. Cobb called my name, I was truly surprised. And when I returned to the table, I set the Oscar down among the breadcrumbs and inspected it carefully. Mother, did I get this for my acting? No, she said. You got it for making the most movies in 1934. <laughs> it's quantity, not quality. You know, if I could uh, have another special Oscar, I could have a nice pair of earrings. It's a very nice size if you don't have a mantle. But I'm very proud of it. And my thanks to the industry for helping me to have an enchanted and very busy childhood. 1934 was also the first year of the Music Awards for Best Score and Best Song. There were only three songs competing that year, and we'd like to remind you again of just how special they were and what a choice the voters faced. The nominees were, from Flying Down to Rio, The Carioca, music by Vincent Humans, lyric by Edward Alescu. From She Loves Me Not, Love in Bloom, music by Ralph Ranger, lyric by Leo Robin. And from The Gay Divorcee, the Continental, music by Con Conrad, lyric by Herb Magnuson. <laughs> The winner was <clears throat> The Continental, music by Con Conrad, lyric by Herb Magidson.
You know, it's difficult to realize, but wonderfully nostalgic to do so. But the most popular dance team of all time first stepped onto the shiny floor of an RKO studio half a century ago, and one half of that beloved team is watching us at his home tonight. And we send our love to Fred Astaire. Here in the audience is his co-star of those wonderful years of movie magic, Ginger Rogers. Johnny, may I go home now? Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Temple Black.